Hi, this is Jason from Effective Dashboards and welcome back to another video. In this video, I'm going to focus on optimizing a matrix for two measures, for displaying two measures. Okay, so in this matrix here, in this example here, we've got a matrix and I'm going to look at this matrix here and I'm just going to show you what we're going to do. We're going to convert this matrix from looking like this to looking like this. Okay, a lot easier to read. So let's go to the before. So the first thing I'm going to show you here is what I've, what we've got in the matrix. So we've got two two values here, two two categories. We've got the first one being the department, which is along the rows axis, and the next one is the work criticality description, which is along the top here. Okay, safety, environment, production, and routine. And within each one of these, we are displaying two measures. Okay, now the reason we're displaying two measures, and this can be quite common, is that you want to be able to put one of the, both the measures in context. You need the you need both measures really to be able to understand the context of the risk that we've got of defective equipment. So in this example here, we've got a number of work orders, so a number of defective pieces of equipment, and um, how much hours, how much labour hours are required to go and fix each one of those, or fix all of the equipment that's in the um, all of these defects. So if we look at this one here, we've got two hours or two two defects, and we've got four hundred and eighty nine hours. But if you go to the one below that, they've got two defects, but it's only going to take seven hours to fix those. So we can get rid of two risks, and it's only going to take us seven hours. But for this one here, we need to spend a lot of time, so four hundred eighty, almost five hundred hours, to get rid of the, the same two risks. Okay, one of them might be one hour, and the other one might be the rest, but. Generally speaking, there's there's more hours there, so we only know that by looking at them in context, or by putting a bit of context between the two of them. And that's quite why it's quite important to display these two in this example here. So let's go and start making some changes. So the first thing I'm going to do, and I've got the steps below here, is I'm going to go and I want to be able to add some brackets to differentiate this hours and this this the, t the two measures and I think it just helps to draw the eye between the two and separate them it doesn't look to be, it doesn't look like such a jumble of numbers so to do that I've got a measure here and I'm just going to talk you through this measure so we're going to go and create a new measure called backlog hours text with brackets okay it is what it says in the tin there I keep the measures um, quite explanatory and it's an if statement, and then we're going to first of all check to see if backlog hours equals zero. Now, if they do equal zero, then we want to display a blank. We don't want to display as zero because if we do, then all of these blanks are going to be, are going to have zeros in it, and it's going to make it a little bit, just a little bit harder to read. Now, each one of these changes are incremental, but added together, they just make it a lot easier to read this visual. And if we've got zeros that your brain's having to process and discount, then it's um. It's not a good thing. So we're going to do that first of all. Then we're going to use a couple of a couple of um, Power BI features in here. The first thing is we're going to use concatenate. Now, this ampersand is the short symbol for concatenate. So you want to join two two pieces of text together. Okay. So the first piece of text we've got in the text, if it's actually just written text, needs to be encapsulated within invert commas just like this is here so we're going to start with a bracket and then we're going to use a function so this function is called format and what it does is it returns a text string after you've added a couple of values um, a couple of um, arguments and the first argument i just show you this is a value and in this example here the value is going to be our backlog hours measure and then the second which is format is the format that we are going to return this value in as a text string and I'm going to format this is the format here that I'm going to use and that's going to make sure that we've got a comma separated um, thousands okay because we, we do want to have that comma separated thousand just makes it easier to read like these values here like that 9977 we want it still to look like that within the brackets and then we're going to use uh, another bracket here um, a concatenation sign in another bracket just to round it off so we're going to encapsulate that measure within the brackets. So let's go and pull that into the measure. Uh, sorry, the visualization. And we can see here that we've now got this encapsulated within the um, the, the the brackets here. And it's it's actually 
formatted it to the left hand side, which I think is okay. We could go and change that, but I'm I'm, I'm happy with that actually, because then you could just read them side more or less side by side. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go and play with the the width of these. So I want to be quite precise with the width of these, and I want them to be as wide as needed, but not much wider. So to do that, I'm going to use a couple of measure a couple of the um the features within the 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 visualization itself. So the first thing I'm going to do is I've got this auto, we've got this auto I type auto here. We've got this column header auto size. Now auto size is on and that's why they've actually auto sized to be the size the longest value beat the header the beat on the values within the the column. And um, that's on by default. So we're going to take advantage of that first of all to size the columns to be quite precise and then we're going to switch it off. So the first thing I'm going to do is go and change this category value description here to be something about the longest we're going to need it to be. Right, here we go. So we've got here bracket 21,763. So it might be that we go above, it's unlikely we're going to go to 100,000, but it's not going to harm us to basically future proof it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to type in a bracket and then I'm going to type in 0, 0, 0, 0, comma, oh, comma, 0, 0, 0, or 9, but we'll just leave it at 0, because 0 is probably the widest um, number. And then if I press enter here, we can see that this is auto sized because we've got that auto size, auto column width size. It's auto sized to be the size of this column here, this header here, or this category description, whatever it's called. Um, and I'm going to do the same with the other one as well. So all I need to do is double click in here, one, two, three, one, two, three. And we can see that this is going to be as wide as we need it to be and a little bit wider in case that goes into hundreds of thousands but it's not going to harm to have it just a little bit wider there just an extra zero and we can see that it looks a lot neater and a lot nicer now that we've got these both the same size so that's the second thing i'm going to do now to return it well actually we don't need to return it because the next thing i'm going to do is i'm going to simplify the column headers okay so if i press space and press enter we can see that this ah First of all, sorry, let's put this back again. I forgot to switch the auto sizing off. Did you see it auto sized back again? It made it bigger. So let's go back in here and let's go and switch off the auto sizing. Switch it off. Okay, so now if I go back and change this and just press space there and that just returns it, we can see it's wrapped instead of auto sized. Okay, that's exactly what we want it to do. Um, right, but what we've got is we've got backlog count mentioned one, two, three, four, five times, and then if I go and put this one in as well, we've got back. Yeah, you know, so there's quite a lot of duplication of the the values there that we don't necessarily need. So I'm going to take two steps here. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little dash in each one of these. Okay, um, and that's and that's it's it's still rep it's still repetitive, but it's less. It's less of a cognitive load. It's called so. It, you don't need. You don't. You need to. Your mind needs to actually read the text. It'll want to read the text if you, even if it's duplicated text. But if it's just a dash, you can process that really quickly. However, we don't know what these values are, so we need some sort of units of measure. So what I'm going to do is, after I've simplified the, I'm going to actually. Well, actually, step number five here. I'm going to add in the title to explain what that is. So let's do that before we go into step number four. So let's go and switch the title on. And what I've done here is in the title, maintenance backlog, and then I've put work orders slash hours. So I've embedded the units of measure, the units or the description of what each of these columns is into the title, okay? So it only needs to be displayed once rather than it, it being in the actual title for each one of these. Okay, so hopefully understand what I'm doing there. Next, I'm going to lighten this up. So just now it's a lot better than it was. Um, we've got these brackets here that clearly differentiate between these two. And in your mind, you think, well, they're two different measures, so there must be something different. 
we can see in brackets hours, it's fine, so we've got work orders and hours, so that tells a story. The next thing I'm going to do, I'm just going to make it even slightly more of a differentiation, because I mind, I mind like to pick up between um, differences. So let's go into our field formatting here. Now you need to know which one this is. So there's a second one we want to format. And I'm going to change the background colour. And I'm just going to change it to something. Oh, no, sorry, not the background colour, the font colour. Let's go back to the background, leave that. I'm going to change the font colour to be a font. Now you could go for something really light that's probably just a little bit too light. It's just maybe a slightly subtler. Okay. So that's, you can see here it's in brackets and it's slightly lighter and that gives it almost a, almost a feeling of a hierarchy, right? That's the most important. This one's in brackets, it's slightly lighter, so it's slightly less important. And um, just subconsciously your brain's kind of already starting to think about both of these as being two different values and this one being something that's more important. Now remember to apply it to the total as well. I'll just make sure that's a total. So we can see it's still bold, but it's still that um, that's that slightly different colour. In fact, you can see it. It's, it's emphasised here with the bold. Okay, so it's starting to take shape now. Um, we've lightened the colour. We've added the title that explains the unit of measure. And then finally, we're going to go and add in the conditional formatting. So let's go back up here and let's open up the conditional formatting. And we can see here that we've got an issue. So for the field formatting, even though the the, the field headers were the same, it showed it displayed both headers and you could select you knew that the hours was the backlog count was the first one and the hours was the second one. So um, that was fine. But in this one here there's no option. You can only display one and it's probably going to take the first one. But we don't know that for sure. So what we need to do is go back up into our field well here and just change that temp on a temporary basis just for each for well, actually, it's, it doesn't really matter what it is, as long as it's something different, see for count. And then we'll go back to conditional formatting. And then we're going to select the C. And I'm going to use a background colour here. Just make it like a bit of a heat map. And I'm going to go in. We've got colour scale, values only. We're basing it on the backlog, but, uh, on the backlog count. The lowest value I want to be this um, to be white, the highest value I want to be red. Um, Diverging, that's fine. And here we go. Okay, so we can see here now we've got these values. Just to finish off, a couple of things. First of all, well, three things. First of all, let's turn this back to be that dash. And then let's go and sort this total here so that the biggest value is at the top, because that's the value we're most interested in, and we can see that that's the case. And then finally, I think, just just to make it even less cluttered and a, lot, and a little bit clearer, we don't really need these grids here, because we've got all these values here, and it's just, it's just um, you know, taking up a lot of, um, of colour, and, and I think it can be better, it just looks a little bit better. We've got these, because we're using these blocks of colour, they draw lines, these horizontal lines. Yeah, so the vertical links. So let's go and try and switch off the grid. I think that makes it look a little bit bigger. So vertical grid, it's on just now. We can switch it off and it just tidies up a little bit. Okay, we've got a line here. I don't think we need it. Um, the horizontal grid, I think we're probably still... I mean, maybe even if you wanted to simplify it even more, maybe the horizontal grid is something that's... You know, if you want to be really simple, but I, I think I'm going to leave that horizontal grid on. Yeah. Okay, so that is it. Let's look at a before and after. Yeah, I decided to leave it on when I did the, the before. Okay, so we've changed this big um, or large um, matrix here with the two values into something that's um, oh, putting some filters on. And it's something that's got a bit more information in it and it's a bit easier to see the different, a bit easier first of all to see the issues and then from there it's a bit easier to differentiate between the two values and then um, we don't have all this duplication here, we've managed to compress it and um, managed to make it look and feel a lot better. So hopefully you've got some ideas here about how you can apply these in your own tables and matrices. 
Um, yeah, so if you like this video, it'd be appreciated if you give it a thumbs up. If you want to subscribe to the channel and be kept up to date with the latest releases, I release a video around about every week, then press the subscribe button and the wee bell and you'll get a notification. But apart from that, thanks very much for listening and watching and I will talk to you in the next video.